So here I'm going to describe population genetics related to forensic science. So here we see kind of a nice little image here of population genetics, a bunch of people kind of forming this, what looks like a DNA molecule. So starting off with heredity, heredity is a transfer of characteristics from parent to an offspring. You have two copies of DNA, one from mom, one from dad, and you're kind of a mixture of the two. Now you might get some more from mom or some more from dad and particular traits, uh, but you have that kind of mixing um, and that's you're inheriting those traits. Other than your mitochondria, that all comes from your mom, uh, so that's why you may inherit just a little bit more um, from the maternal side than the paternal side. Allele expression, we're looking at dominant versus recessive. Um, so dominant is represented by capital letters, recessive represented by lowercase letters if we're looking at doing a like Punnett square comparison. Now keep in mind, recessive does not mean less, does not mean negative, it just means that it is shadowed by the expression of the dominant. So for example, um, blonde hair would be recessive to brown or black hair. So a Blue eyes or gray eyes would be recessive to brown eyes. Again, no pro or con to being dominant versus recessive. Um, just gives you an idea of the genetic markers that you may carry. And based on what mom and dad's genetics are, it can help determine the odds of what genes you're going to get. We have genotype and phenotype. So again, genotypes are those genes that you're actually inheriting. And phenotype is how something physically looks. So this genotype is an organism's kind of combination of alleles for a given gene. The example of the pea plant here, the possible genotypes are for uh, purple colored flowers, a purple and white gene, or a white and white gene. Now the phenotype is gonna be those physical appearances that we see. So the phenotype here for the pea plants is either gonna be purple, which is dominant over white. So just in this example, we see three purple flowers, one white flower. If we look at the genotypes though, we see varying amounts of genotypes. Instead of just purple and white, so two different phenotypes, we can see that there's actually three different genotypes. So both plants with purple and purple and purple and white genotypes have the purple phenotype, while plants with white and white genotypes have the white phenotype. So again, looking at the genotypes and the phenotypes with the dominant overshadowing the recessive. In order to get an expression or phenotype of the recessive, you need to have both um, genes uh, express that recessive allele. Now these alleles and traits, we have something called uh, uh, homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous means that the organism has two copies of the same allele. It could be homozygous dominant, or as we saw with the white flower, homozygous recessive. Uh, this is if both copies are dominant or both copies are recessive, that would both be considered homozygous. Now heterozygous is, in, is where there's two different copies, where we have one dominant and one recessive. Now these both heterozygous uh, genotypes are going to have the same phenotype. Why? Because they're going to have that one dominant allele, so that dominant one is going to be expressed, giving the appearance or the phenotype. So again, it's where genotype and phenotype uh, compare. Now, when we get back to this population genetics, it's the study of a variation of genes in the amount and group of individuals, looking more at the true genetics than, say, the phenotypic expressions. This population genetics are just databases used for allele frequencies within a population, and this data can be used for probability calculations. We're looking at comparing uh, someone to the general population or the odds that we might see that gene. Uh, this can just a great way to use a large database to determine the odds that that genotype is just an anomaly or how frequently it may be present within a large population.